Hey, what's going on everyone? Hanging out here at Wild Florida Safari and Airboat Rides. We're gonna meet up with my good buddy, Andrew Biddle, and we're gonna get a VIP tour of their new safari park. It's over 200 acres of wild animals. I figured this would be a fun trip away from home. This is only 100 miles away from where I live. They're in Central Florida. It's a really fantastic spot, and I hope you guys enjoy it. You're gonna get to meet Andrew and some of the staff members here that work with these animals. Awesome, man, this is so cool. So if you guys find yourself vacationing in Central Florida and you want something fun to do, you guys are about how far from Orlando are we right now? Um, about 45 minutes. That's awesome, man. And it's really neat because you get to see so many cool aspects of Central Florida's habitat. I mean, you drive through some really amazing areas here. Yeah, we're just kind of off the beaten path just outside of Orlando. So, um, you know, there's not a lot of development out here. But even the lake that we do our airboat tours, there's no development on the lake at all. It's amazing. So it's a truly wild uh, experience in Florida, hence the name. Yeah. All right, man. I'm ready when you are. Here we go, guys. We're going to cruise right in. You always get that, that fun vibe. This is awesome. So this is our lemur island. We have oh, nine cool. ringtail lemurs um, out here. We've gotten so much rain that our water levels are a little high. Okay. Um, so we have, um, throughout the whole the whole safari, we have hay shelter set up. Um, we put out about 30 bales of hay a day. Wow. Um, and then we also put out 700 pounds of grain a oh day. Oh my God. So we, we put out a lot of hay, There's a, and we do the, the coastal hay, the, it's a nicer, it's more of a mixture hay really. Um, because we're able to maintain even through winter grass that's important to us we want to always have grass we don't want to turn it into like a dirt bowl this guy taking off that's a uh, nail guy yes so that's the largest asian antelope species um nail guy means blue bull okay and they also are nicknamed the blue death because the males turn blue or silt like a gray color like that um, and when they're in rut they're super dangerous okay so one thing with these guys that you know we've kind of we kind of always tell everybody Especially the hoofstock, the bigger, you know, antelope and, and cow species, they they look like cows and deer and you think they're friendly, but the males can be some of the most dangerous animals on the earth, especially when they're in rut. Well, and, and you know, not for nothing, and I always say this too, just because you're herbivore does not mean that right. you're not tough. I mean, these yeah. are animals that have to outwit and outfight sometimes tigers. Yeah, tigers. No guy are from India, oh, yeah. aren't they? Yep. Yeah, so that's, I mean, that's serious power oh, yeah. on those animals. So incredible, man. Yeah, and they're weighing, uh, you know, over a thousand pounds um, and they have horns and stuff. So yeah, you can get messed up. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So. so what kind of protocol, and you can keep the engine running, it don't matter, we can drive and talk, but what kind of protocol, like, is it to work, like, there he goes right there, yeah. and you can see, he's just a solid muscle. Oh, yeah. How many nil guy do you have? So we have, um, let's see, we actually just received a couple more females, so we're somewhere around 13 of them. Okay. And we'll, the nice thing about the tour, when we do these VIP tours, um, you know, we can drive off the road and, and we'll oh, find so them and cool. stuff. So. That's awesome, man. This is so rad. And then, of course, we have to have alligators and crocodiles. So oh, there you go. Throughout, we have a couple different areas that's fenced off. Oh, that's awesome. So this is our alligator breeding marsh. So we've taken in our nuisance trapped alligator. So you guys do. You, you uh, are nuisance gator yep. trappers, but you don't kill the gators. They get a second chance at life. Right. So we, well, we, yeah, we don't actually trap them. Um, so we just buy in from the trappers. So okay. we, we pay more than what a harvester would pay because it is more work for the trappers to catch them alive. Got it out, yep. they, It's easier for them just to euthanize them. Um, so we'll pay more uh, for them alive than, than a harvester would. So that's really cool. So that's, that's something that, as a reptile lover, um, if you guys want to support uh, a really cool organization, you know, they're, they're doing great work for the local gator population uh, here in Central Florida and all over Florida. I imagine you get gators from all over. Yeah, absolutely. So that's really cool. And now we're going on our, this is where we get the VIP treatment, huh? Yeah. This is so, this is like being out, I mean, I would say Serengeti, but yeah. these may not be Serengeti animals. What are we looking at? So we have blue wildebeest all oh set up over God, here, and they have calves. So they're they're a little standoffish right now. Um, and then we have these little antelope species that are springbuck. They're um, oh my they're, gosh, they're they are Serengeti buck. animals. Then yeah, these are right. blackbuck. So they're called blackbuck because the males, when they get into mature and rut, they turn real dark like that. 
and we have a couple of them. He's not one of our. He's pretty dark, but we have we have some that are even more dark. But I love I love the fact that you know you're just seeing these these uh, animals just laying in the grass, mm -hmm. behaving naturally. I mean, this really does feel as close to Africa as I'm going to get today. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I was wondering if you had wildebeest. Yep. Wildebeest have always been a special animal for me because when I was growing up, I grew up in Long Island, New York, and my father is much, he was an older dad, you know? So we didn't play baseball or do any of that kind of stuff together, but what we did bond uh, with was my dad would always yell in, yell outside, hey, Kenan, the wildebeest are crossing the river again, and you know what that meant. That yep. meant we were gonna see some Nile crocodiles. You got water buffalo? Yep. Holy. So we have Asian water buffalo, then these are water buck. One okay. of the things with the water buck that's kind of cool is it looks like they sat on a wet painted toilet seat yeah so they have a nice ring around their butt and then their their noses are heart shaped so a lot of people uh, recognize them for their their nose okay yeah. that's a lot it's a lot to think about when you're setting up you're, you're essentially setting up a, a mini ecosystem here, right right yep so even on the plains you know when you're talking about the plains of africa or in india mm -hmm. you know it's just you're dealing with space that's just you know an animal can run away and be away right. from it here it's a little bit different so um are they yeah, I gotta go yeah. get onto them. Okay. <laughs> this is what not to do. Yeah. I, I, we might as well show it. So these people have gotten out of their vehicle and um, yeah, you're not supposed to do that. You know, the one thing people have to realize is that these are, we just said it a moment ago, even though they're herbivores, they look domesticated. Right. A wildebeest can kill you. Oh, absolutely. I mean, these things, you know, this, I mean, this is a young male, or no, it's a female, but she's probably 250 pounds and you know, it, it's not so much that they're they're gonna try to hurt you to eat you, they're, if they feel threatened. So even out here, you know, they get used to the vehicles and what's really funny is they're so desensitized to the vehicles that a lot of times the people, they'll sit right on the side of the road, um, but when we come through in the buggies, it's different. So they're like, ooh, so they're a little more standoffish. But yeah, if they feel threatened and you know, we don't speak well to be, so how do we know if right. they feel threatened or not? So. Exactly right, and it just takes one decision on that animal's part, and you're not going to get away from it. Right. So stay in the vehicles. <laughs> it looks like an emu. I just, you know, it's so cool to just see different animals uh, all interacting. I always loved, even with my own small, you know, version of this, mm -hmm. multi-species exhibits. Yep. It's, it's so much fun to have some turtles in with a couple oh, of lizards yeah. or, you know, and just to have this, I mean, that's, I, I would always be tempted to try and get an emu myself, but my wife is deathly afraid of birds. And I think a bird of that size is more like a dinosaur oh, uh, than a bird itself. Sure. You know what I mean? I don't like birds. So. You don't really, no, they're I, not yeah. your favorite. No, they're not my favorite. I mean, <laughs> birds of prey are okay, but yeah, um, the emus, we have some ostrich and, and it definitely takes some um, getting used to. I guess parrots are probably my the ones that I don't care for. The That's the you're like my wife. Yep. She's terrified of. Uh, she just gets a little spooked by them. All yeah. my scars are from birds. Too. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. From birds. Look at this. Look at guys. Look at where we are. How beautiful is this, huh? And what an animal. I mean, I just I am. I love seeing them because to me, you know, you're looking at a dinosaur. Oh, absolutely. Look it's, at their feet. Yeah, I know. My, and most people. Oh, sorry, I'm loud. And most people think. That right there is its knee, okay? That is not the animal's knee. That's actually the bird's ankle. So the foot is extremely elongated. People don't realize. They think they have backwards facing knees. That's not true. It's actually its ankle. So they're really specialized foot. So this is, I mean, we haven't even scratched the surface. See these cattle guards, folks? So the hoofstock doesn't like to put its feet through these grates. Now that being said, you will shut the doors at night. Yeah, so at night we will kind of close the gates just so that they don't. Hey buddy. For one, we don't want them to try to go across it and get stuck. Um, obviously during the day, they're not doing too much of, you know, moving around with. Am I, gonna with get, am I gonna get pecked? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> the emus are always a little curious. They're a little sketchy, huh? What's up, dude? <laughs> I, I, you know, that's pretty funny, man. Yeah, we're close, we're close together. See, this is VIP treatment. I could lose an eye right now, but that's all right. It will all be in service of education for you folks. All right, this guy's very inquisitive, man. Yeah, they, man, we, do, so we do a VIP tour um, and we feed from this buggy. Okay. Um, so then a lot of times they recognize the buggy and they're like, oh, what do you have? Listen, I, I'm gonna have to uh, bug you again in a couple of months. I'm gonna have to bring my kids and oh, wife absolutely. here. If that's okay, sure. because they're gonna see this video and instantly be bummed. 
and I'm, I'm gonna have a hard time when I go home. More wildebeest? Yeah. They also call these Gnu, right? Is uh, that yeah. another name for yeah. them? Yeah. yeah. But they're beautiful. I never realized they had some stripes, man. Yeah, so these are blues. I got a little twisted ankle. Oh. Well, we're about to get a real up close and personal experience with some camels. Are these uh, Asiatic camels? What type? So these are the dromedaries. Okay. So there's dromedary and Bactrian, and we do have we have both of them. I'll uh, I'll point out the Bactrian. Okay. But the, if you think about it, the dromedaries have one hump like a D, and okay. the Bactrians are are two humps two like, like a, a B. Two like a D. All right. So we have Sid and Elvis. So let's see who, I think Sid's usually the one that's Oh, the most Sid. And um, you know, camels, you know, they evolved in arid environments. Mm -hmm. That's, yep. yeah. Yeah, so um, there's the rule with them, it's, it's 30, 30, 30. So they can go 30 days without water. They live about 30 years and they can also run 30 miles an hour. Wow. If you ever see a camel run, it's pretty hilarious. Oh Their legs gosh. are just flaring around. Yes, they kind of just, the, look out so with them so you'll see like the nostrils are completely sealed the, the the hair on the eyelashes all that stuff is to keep like sand even the really hairy ears oh man what <laughs> guys how cool is this huh oh here, here comes, comes elvis. here comes elvis the king come here man i got some for you he's making some noise look at that droopy lip man yeah <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> that is awesome. But now, when you feed him, is it similar to a horse or? Uh, yeah, you just give him the carrot. Oh, okay. Like just that. give him the carrot. Take the carrot. There you go. Oh, wow. He slurps it up kind of. Yeah. I think we look very similar, man. <laughs> this is awesome. That is amazing. <laughs> are you kidding me? So people can, hi, how are you? <laughs> how you doing, buddy? Yeah, I'm looking down the gate. Oh, he's giving me kisses here. <laughs> Let's give him something something to eat for his friendliness there what a nice guy may i pet you you are beautiful and that 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 uh it's almost like a wool yeah you know they're they're yep. i guess is and they'll fur, shed yeah. in the uh, summertime too so it's not as thick so they're starting to kind of grow it grow back it back now. oh wow this is awesome yeah you know guys it's really incredible you know i'm a reptile guy right but i love and appreciate being close to such large animals oh we're gonna go buddy thank you so much you gave me a nice kiss that's so rad so you can actually book one of these vip tours man that is so cool what an experience so if you get a couple friends together how many people can be in one group so it just depends we um we will actually run two buggies if we need to but typically you know four is you know Max. three to four is yeah. comfortable you know you can kind of sit three in the back and one up front so um, that it you have to do it man this is a lot of fun now, I don't necessarily know if you're going to get Andrew as your tour guide. Uh, I lucked out in that regard, being his buddy and all. But, um, man, what an experience. Just, just the camels alone was worth the price of admission. And how about it? Look at this ostrich coming out. How sketchy are the ostriches? So, none of them are too bad. This is a younger male. Um, we have a really cool one that we'll see on the way out. Okay. He was at the other end. Um, and he's the one that that'll come right up into the buggy and check everything out oh this guy's looking pretty uh brave at the yep. moment yeah so you can see he's starting to mature so his shins are getting really red oh his wow will start to turn red really yep oh my god dude <laughs> oh my god sophia would lose her mind oh, my stepdaughter would <laughs> lose her mind i gotta bring her back yeah man i you know i almost was thinking ah don't drop them off at school. They could come with me today. Yeah, they would have loved it. I, um, I brought my kids to your house, though. Yeah, no problem. I mean, anytime. This is great, man. There you go. One of the big five. Yeah. Beautiful zebra, man. So these yeah. are Grant zebras. Grant yep. zebras. Okay. How many different types of zebra are there? I'm pretty sure there's seven. Okay. I, I'm not familiar with all of them. I know the Grants. Um, they're the only ones that have the striping all the way under their bellies and down to their hooks. Oh, and wow. they're probably one of the most common um, that you'll see like over in the States and stuff. And what's unique about zebras is they don't really get flies. So, I mean, obviously they get a couple flies, but um, it's something about a fly's ocular uh, eyes that they can't land on them very well because of the black and white striping. <laughs> so, get out of here. Yep. So you'll see them next to other cattle and stuff and th those will be covered in flies. And obviously we will treat them for flies here and spray and stuff, but we don't have to mess with a zebra because 
They just don't get flies. That's really something, man. And obviously in Africa, that's a huge plus, know, plus for them. So. Yeah, they don't want to get diseases. Yep. They're, uh, it's not a nuisance. The other thing I love about zebra, and especially this guy, you see him right there? He's got, they have the killer mane. Their yep. mane is like a mohawk. It's yeah. punk rock. And he's yeah. our he's our male uh, stallion breeder. So okay. he's the one that has the longest mane. Okay. Um, so it's always easy to kind of distinguish them. But they're also, can zebra can actually be, I mean, it's a wild animal. Right. It's not a domesticated horse, so, so they can be very dangerous. Oh, right? absolutely. And the interesting thing is we used to keep all of our zebra with our giraffe that's kind of isolated because they can be super aggressive, not only towards people. I mean, they're very dangerous. They'll bite you, they'll kick you, they'll stomp you. Um, towards other animals. So in this area, we don't have any small animal hoofstock, no black buck, because okay. they'll stomp them. They'll, really? Yeah, anything that's much lower than, you know, shorter than, let's say, their belly or their knee, they'll just stomp them out for no particular reason. That's, they just can be really aggressive. Wow, so. just, they don't like competition, man. Yep. Everyone's eating the same food out here. Exactly. Wow. So anything that they can take advantage of, they will. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, people think they're just this cute horse, but yeah, they're yeah. not. <laughs> Mess you up. All right, so we got a few surprises here. All right, yep. What is that? So we have the Z-Donk, which uh, is a zebra and a donkey cross, no and then way. a Zorus, so a zebra and a horse. And I thought that a Zorus was just a made up name from yeah. Lord of the Rings, I think. <laughs> I read like Lord of the Rings as a kid, and Samwise Gamgee wanted to see Oliphants and Zorses. Mm -hmm. Any nerds out there? I know there's gotta be a few hundred of you out there. Anyway, there is a real live Zorus all the way from Middle Earth. That's really cool. This is one of our big water buffalo steers. So like I said, we don't have any bulls and tack bulls out here. Okay. We have our Watsu seat. So that's a big, he's kind of got that like Ragnarok uh, sword. <sighs> yeah, Suter. Suter, yeah, the, the, the yep. god of whatever, the fire god. That is, that's an imposing and impressive animal. Mm -hmm. And you got to think, man, if, it ain't easy being a lion. No. If no, you're 20, hungry, 2,500 pounds. 2,500 pounds. And one of the cool things about the Asian water buffalo too is that's where mozzarella cheese is made from Missouri milk. So when you eat mozzarella cheese, it's from Asian water buffalo milk. Really? Yep. How'd the Italians figure that out? I don't know. <laughs> Marco Polo doing some work? That's, there you go. Mozzarella bulls. No, these are female? Uh, yeah, these are all okay. females. Those are all gals. Holy smokes. Well, thanks for the cheese. <laughs> Tonight's pizza night for me. I'm excited. I'll, I'll bring that little topic up tonight with the Italian family I'm going to have yep. pizza with. There you go. These are Watusi. Yep. This is going to make my dad excited, man, because the Watusi are also, are they not also a tribe of, of Native Africans? So, um, I know that they're, they're really, they're a form of currency in Africa. Okay. And, uh, they'll use them, they would use them for a dowry. So maybe it's the Maasai, I think. The maybe, Maasai. Yeah. Oh my God. That's your bull? No, the bull is actually back there. Oh God. So he has the really big round horns. That is incredible. But are these a wild form of cow or are they are they domestic? They're pretty much domesticated in Africa, yeah. Okay. So they're, and they're more of a milking cow than, than like a meat cow. Even the domestic animals in Africa look amazing they look gnarly i, I mean everything in africa is awesome yeah it's pretty <laughs> much the monitors the snakes the the lions everything is just look at that and they Are have the serious? largest horns for circumference so as far as the the girth or the width of them okay where texas longhorns obviously has the longest in distance but these guys have the the you know lar uh, largest in circumference that is just it's amazing that an animal like that exists do you know what i mean that we that we're on a planet that has something like that. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. Oh. And they, they're they they're more or less hollow, so they're not as heavy as they look. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, obviously they're pretty heavy, but they're kind of like a honeycomb. <sighs> okay, yeah, so it's, it's awesome, man. Again, nature figures out all these engineering feats uh, that we borrow, because when you look at like trusses on a, on a uh, bridge, it's kind of like that. You get a lot of uh, strength with not as much weight. Awesome, cool stuff. Even giant tortoises. If you if you ever saw the shell of a giant tortoise uh, that from a deceased animal, you'll see that it's not solid bone. Right. There are air pockets in it because you got to think about the physics of lifting something that heavy. Cool. Wait, hold on a second. 
Yeah. Hold on, just one second. I, I, I'm not terrified of them, but you know what? <laughs> I always think of my eyeballs. I know. Right? Like that would suck. Hey, buddy. Are you gonna? Are you gonna pet them? Oh yeah, yeah. You're a jerk. <laughs> get out of here. He just he, get out of here. Go faster. <laughs> That's awesome. Nothing. It didn't even hurt. Just a little startled. Anyway, axis deer. Yep, we have axis, and then we have a fallow deer, the light colored deer, the white one. Okay. And then we have a, these are fallows too. Okay. And then we have this guy who's really cool. He's a leucistic elk. What? So. Oh my gosh. That is cool, man. How rare is it to get an aberration like that with elk? Pretty rare. I've never, I never even heard of one. Come here, bud. And he's super friendly. He's friendly. So he was oh. bottle raised, and they actually castrated him too, like Aww, a steer. Look at this. That's why his antlers are grown. So oh, they grow strange. Because he doesn't produce any testosterone. Oh. Hey, so you buddy. can see he's got the blue eyes. Yeah. A leucistic elk. And that's the largest of the deer species, right? Yep. yep. That's so crazy. And here comes my friend. Hey, listen, Andrew, I don't know how much I like this guy. This is what the corn's for. Oh, this okay. Keeps them distracted. Here, there you go. Thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead, you jerk. Anyway, back to our leucistic deer. Uh, elk, rather. Look at his beautiful eyes. Oh, he wants some of this food. Is he going to be able to get some? Um, usually he doesn't eat it. Oh, well, he yeah, just, okay. made, just made a little mess. That's all right. I think, he, I think he wants to. Oh, gosh. Yeah, again, guys, we're getting the best treatment ever. Oh, hold on, man. <laughs> Shit, now he's on me. <laughs> get the bird. Get the bird. <laughs> This would not go over well with the missus. Hey, Kate, are you stoked that you're working today? What do you think, hon? Would you do this? What's funny is he, he very seldom wants to eat any of the food. Get, get. <laughs> He's mostly just interested in licking the top of the roof. As long as you don't go for my eyeballs, I'm okay with that. Oh, there you're not so tough now, are you? I go oh, to pet you. They're putting out food. Oh, they are? Okay. So. Well, I'm glad those guys got gone. This is awesome, man. Today, huh? Yeah. Mm, there he goes. Oh, they're coming back. Ooh. I ain't gonna lie, Andrew. They give me the willies a yeah. little bit. Yeah. They're they're quite imposing. Yeah, they definitely don't have any manners. No. It makes me think about cassowaries, you know? Oh yeah. I don't want to get disemboweled and I don't want to lose my eyesight. This is a young Neil guy. Oh, that's a Neil guy. Yep. Hey, hey buddy. Me? Yeah, what up, Neil guy? So he's just turning, turning blue like the other one. Wow. And he was bottle raised, so he's a little friendlier. He's friendly. He's got beautiful ears. And I mean, everything is just, you know, everything about this animal, man, just screams speed and power. And Now, the most dangerous animal in the safari is this big eland. <laughs> the big what? That eland right there. That's okay. the big eland bull. He's a beast. Which one? Behind the ostrich so, or looking dead at looking, us? Yeah, he just turned his head that way. Oh, crap. He's a... He, I mean, he's not like super... He's not aggressive or anything. I thought you were going to say this is the most dangerous yeah. animal here. Is That's a rescued goose. Okay. So she, she came to us. She's missing half of her beak. Okay. The guy said she was attacked by like a hawk or something, but she's uh she's pretty friendly she likes to get in the buggy right? oh does she yeah that's cool all right so of course you're gonna pass this guy on my side right yeah absolutely oh cool thank you Here's appreciate the it female nail guy too so they stay the brown color okay the, only the males turn blue awesome hey bud we're gonna take off hey we're leaving see you later that's so cool all right let's see if we can get past this what is it called again elon an elon uh, and they're just, they're the largest, so when they're in rut, they're, you know, he, he could potentially be the most dangerous. He okay. He that he's, like, gonna come after us or Oh, anything, all right, thank you. He's just a big boy. So you're gonna stop right here for me? Yeah. Did you big guys get a good, good enough shot? Frank, how you doing, Frank? I understand when you're a little frustrated, you get a little worked up, buddy, but, uh, you know, you gotta temper <laughs> yourself. We all get a little worked up from time to time. Anyway, cool. All right, so Andrew, this is the final stop yep. on the safari. You get to hand feed the giraffe. And what a vantage point, right? This Not is Leroy. Leroy? Yep. Oh, that's beautiful. There you go. go. Thanks, bud. Yeah, yeah, this is, you know, listen, man, I just got to say thank you so much because this has been an awesome experience. And I really hope uh, that some of you, when you come to Florida on vacation, will come on out to Wild Florida 
Uh, and if you see Andrew or any of our friends that work here, they're camera shy. Uh, if you see any of them, let them know that Camp Kennen sent you, that you saw them on our channel. And uh, just let them know you appreciate all the hard work they're doing to give you guys a really cool experience out here with these amazing animals. So thank you, Leroy, and thank you, Andrew, yeah, as man, always. Man. You know, we're gonna do another video with Andrew. We're gonna get all reptile-y soon, so stick around. More from Wild Florida to come. Great day.